Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the regular meeting of Bedford City Council, February 1st, 2021. And if we could all start off, uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under, God, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Tenutis? Here. Flu Hardy? Here. Mizak? Here. Saunders? Here. Kochi? Here. Spinks? Here. Uh, Council, before we get into the regular meeting, I just want to take a moment and uh, honor Rich Novak, who passed away last week. Uh, Rich, was, Rich was quite an active member of our, uh, our community. He was also a member of our civil service board and a member of the Bedford Historical Society. And uh, he was one of those local guys that just jumped in and, and helped with everything when, when something was needed. And, and I want to extend our condolences to his wife, Louise, and his sons and all their family. Uh, it's just a sudden loss and uh, it's just a terrible thing. And, uh, but I wanted the family to know we are thinking about them and uh, to pass along our condolences. Now, if we can, uh, we'll get on to business. Uh, Council, you have the minutes of the special work session of January 12th, 2021. Are there any corrections? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance by Spink, second by Janudis? Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. And you have the minutes of the work session of January 19th, 2021. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, the motion for acceptance by Janudis, second by Mizak. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. And you have the minutes of the regular meeting of January 19, 2021. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, can we have a motion for acceptance? By Janudis, second by Fluhardy. Clerk, call the roll. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks. Yes. And at this time, um, we're going to have a special presentation for uh, Martin Luther King Day. Uh, I know it's a couple weeks late from the normal holiday, but uh, we couldn't quite work the logistics out for the last meeting. But uh, I think you'll know why I wanted to. to to do this, even though it is late. Uh, we have a, a special young man here, uh, Jaden. And uh, Jaden is the son of Doug Dressman and Jennifer Schaff, who is also a Bedford graduate. And Jaden placed first in the regional Martin Luther King oratorical contest last January and qualified for states, which I understand they were suspended because of the COVID. Uh, additionally, he received a superior rating competing this summer in the Piano Guild. Uh, wow. See why he's a, and I'm not done yet. This, he makes <laughs> me tired just reading what he's up to, this young man. 
he loves both baseball and soccer and is hoping to play again in the community this spring, aren't we all? And during this pandemic, Jaden has learned how to play golf. He loves to travel, read, play video games, and continue to learn. And thank you to the community for your support. Uh, Jaden, that, that's quite a resume for a young man. And we are quite proud that you are a member of uh, the city of Bedford community. And, uh, and I want to congratulate you on your winning that contest last January. And when I saw you deliver this speech, uh, I was totally blown away. And, and I thought this is something everybody should see. And uh, also while you're, you're, while you're watching uh, Jaden do this, listen to the words, the words of Martin Luther King, because they speak volumes. And if we all listen to these words, uh, we'd all be better off. And with that, uh, Jaden, you have anything to say before you start? Uh, thank you, Mayor Kochi. Um, so I wrote a uh, SMA to start the speech, but uh, yeah. Well, whenever you're ready, okay? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, council and community members. My name is Jaden Schof Dressman of the fourth grade. I'm nine years old from the university school. <laughs> Thank you to Mayor Kochi for inviting me to speak this evening about Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. My topic is, where would we be? Where will we be? Where would we be if Martin Luther King Jr. didn't sacrifice for us? Where would we be if he didn't organize a boycott of the bus? Where would we be if he wasn't, if he didn't lead his march in Washington, D.C.? Where would we be if he didn't ignore the people who judged him by his skin color and said, who's he? Where would we be if Martin Luther King Jr. did not win the Nobel Peace Prize? Where would we be? if his heart was not such a tremendous size? Where would we be if he wasn't inspired by Mahatma Gandhi? Where would we be if he did not use his words to fight peacefully? Where would we be if he, hadn't reacted, if he had reacted differently when his house was attacked? Where would we be if he did not use his words to peacefully fight back? Where would we be if he didn't protest and go to jail, where would we be if Martin Luther King Jr. had failed? Where would we be without his famous, I have a dream speech? Where would we be if he wasn't a preacher using big words to teach? Where would we be if he wasn't so smart? Where would we be if he didn't lead with his heart? Where would we be if he didn't use music and sing? Where would we be if he didn't shout from the mountaintop, let freedom ring? Where would we be if he didn't strive for change? Where would we be if he fought anger with rage? Where would we be if Martin Luther King Jr. did not have a strong faith in God? Where would we be if he did not support other freedom fighters with the knot? Where will we be if we don't stand up for ourselves and others? Where will we be if we don't all treat each other as sisters and brothers? Where will we be if we don't have faith and hope? Where will we be if we don't live our lives through the words of his quotes? When the history books are written, someone will say they'll live Black people who had courage to stand up for their rights. In my opinion, we should all join together as Blacks and Whites. Sooner or later, all the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together, said this great man. I have faith that together as one, we will take a stand. Thank you, Jane. Awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. That was very good. 
and uh, I, I can see uh, big things in the future for you, young man. And uh, keep up at it and all your other endeavors that you're in and, uh, and keep going with your schoolwork. We, uh, we're so proud of you. Thank you. You're welcome. And thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, Jaden. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> All right, Doug, thank you. All right, thanks, everybody. Uh, that Doug. was great. Well, that thank was... you, Jaden, if you're cutting out. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Wow. What, what, what a young man. Wow. Oh, he's <laughs> awesome. Good. He's, he's very like tired of reading his summary there. He's, he's into everything. <laughs> Probably be sitting in this seat pretty soon. <laughs> Maybe by the time he gets to 10th grade, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> kind of hate to get down to, to regular business, kind of anticlimactic right now. <laughs> but we, we will. Uh, under old business, uh, we have ordinance number 9842-21. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Axon Enterprises, Inc. for the purpose and implementation of dash cameras and body cameras for the police department in declaring an emergency. Can I have a motion for suspension, please? By Januta, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janutis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? You're muted. You're muted, Don. Yeah, somebody muted me too, and I had to get it changed. <laughs> uh oh. Mike, do you, you override him? Or? You're he was muted too. too. <laughs> he Don, was muted can you hear too. us? You're muted. You're muted. He's trying. There we go. The mouse wouldn't work. Oh, I need to get a separate okay. mouse from the computer. <laughs> we we need a yes or no from you. For the, <laughs> yes. For the okay. Coachy. Yes. Sphinx. Yes. And motion for third and final by Flu Hardy, second by Mizek. Uh, Mike, you want to explain this? You're muted, Mike. Mike, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. There goes uh, yeah, the slope up. This is a uh, follow-up from the last meeting um, and something we discussed during the budget process of um, implementing both dash cameras and body cameras for the police department. Um, we've looked at this, uh, we've researched this over the last few years, um, you know, I, I think from um, an operational standpoint um, for the officers, for the public, from a transparency standpoint, um, safety standpoint, this is a, a good thing and a good thing for, for the community and for the department. Um, we went out and we obtained three separate quotes, um, Axon being one of the companies um, as well as two other companies. Um, I want to commend Frank Gambosi, did a great job breaking it down um, as far as the costs. Um, and when I, when I talk about that, we're not only dealing with hardware, we're dealing with maintenance, we're dealing with licensing fees. Um, Chief Stemple has done an outstanding job with um, the, the senior staffing over there as far as working with the state of Ohio to, to um, establish policies and procedures. Um, there's a lot of things that have to go into this um, uh, endeavor, especially with the data, um, that data having to be stored, uh, making sure we have ample amount of storage. Um, so again, as we, as we move forward, this has been a goal for us. Um, as I think the administration and council, as we've talked about it, uh, we'd like to implement it this year. Um, breaking it down, um, you know, Axon, um, you know, over a five-year period, um, but that first initial year um, being at $104,000 um, is for, is the cheapest of the three. And then obviously maintaining these 
um, this equipment. We would get new hardware from Axon in year three. We would get additional new hardware from them in year five. Um, based on um, demos, um, based on um, our research in, in contacting other company or other cities that utilized Axon um, and getting information on, on the other two companies. Um, in all, it's our recommendation to move forward with this um, and enter into a contract with Axon um, to outfit all the officers with body cameras and all of our police cruisers with dash cameras. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Seeing none. Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Denudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. And uh, now we'll get to reports. Uh, before we jump into reports, I just want to say uh, shout out to Bob Spinks on his birthday. It was... Uh, Yesterday? No, Friday. 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 Same day as my grandson. That's why I remember it. And, uh, and Bob's usually sitting in the front row here in the council chambers, but nobody's in the front row or, or <laughs> any row. It, it's still weird after a year of doing this, almost a year doing this. Uh, I just want to say happy birthday, Bob. He's sitting in the living room watching TV. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, good for him. And... Uh, <laughs> Reports, uh, Mike Malice, Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, got a, a, a few items here. First, I just want to commend Jaden. That was a, a tremendous presentation. Um, and, the, and the words, as Mayor Kochi said, when you listen to those words, they really, um, they, they, they really send a message. And, and, and kudos to you, young man. Um, definitely um, outstanding. Um, just some updates on um, some projects that are upcoming and, and capital improvement projects. Um, I do want to indicate that the county uh, did release a couple weeks ago uh, the tree canopy grant for this year. Uh, for those that recall, um, we did apply for this last year, planted um, 100 and some trees throughout town in area where we removed old ash trees. Um, our staff is already working to uh, submit another application for this grant, um, and we will be working to identify the areas um, um, as, as we complete the grant application. So I'm, I'm confident um, that we uh, will be able to submit something good and hopefully get funding to plant some more trees. Um, so uh, that is one project. Second project, um, we've been notified from Dominion East Ohio that they're going to be looking at a main line gas replacement um, in the area of Woodrow and Washington. Um, they did submit the plans for us. Now we do know they, they still have some restoration work to, to finish on, on one of their other projects. And we have indicated to them that, you know, we really can't start this um, at least until after April. But that project will be coming um, to Bedford um, this year. And again, um, those uh, property owners that will be affected will get notification um, and it will be um, through Dominion East Ohio uh, and their contractor. Um, and just again, as a follow-up, uh, that area that will be affected will be Washington and Woodrow. I want to touch base uh, regarding some major projects that we're working to plan um, from an infrastructure standpoint. Some of these have been um, in the works for a few years, um, and others we're um, working on planning now for this year. Uh, first and foremost, we are going to be moving forward with our road program this year um, with an estimated budget of um, 400, uh, roughly about $400,000. Um, we've identified three streets already, but we're going to be looking to identify more um, depending on what those estimates come in at. We'll be looking to um, do an assessment um, in the coming months when the weather breaks. We were also uh, excited to get confirmation from Cuyahoga County um, that they will indeed be resurfacing Union Street this year, um, 2021. Um, but, yeah, plans for that is going to be, uh, it will be extended. It's not going to be Northfield to Broadway. It's actually going to be Broadway to Broadway. The entire strip of Union will be resurfaced um, in 2021. Um, we are looking at when that project can go out to bid, um, and we'll be working closely with Cuyahoga County um, 
uh, with that project. We will, uh, we are anticipating a contract coming over from them um, that we'll need to sign and obviously pass legislation, but that'll be coming um, hopefully in the next couple of meetings, we'll have that on the agenda. We are also looking to do a major water line project uh, through the historic district. Um, we need to um, abandon a, a water line that was put in in the late 20s, early 30s, and obviously connect all of those um, properties that feed off of that line. It's going to be more extensive work that, that comes into play with this. Uh, we're looking at budget. We're looking at cost estimates and obviously to see what other um, what other improvements in the downtown area that we can do. The reason we're targeting this in 2021 is, you know, we anticipate ODOT um, in the coming years to come in and resurface Broadway, and we want to make sure our infrastructure is covered uh, before they embark on that project. So a lot of this is a planning from a planning standpoint, um, and we're doing that now. Um, I want to commend um, Dr. Selico and, and the Bedford City School Board and, and the entire administration. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to um, participate or attend, I should say, attend a grand opening that they had last week. And they unveiled a school resource room. And, you know, I'll tell you what, it, 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 one thing that we always talk about here in, in Bedford is, you know, obviously, you know, we're here, we're here to help and, and, and give back and, and try to help those in need. And, you know, this room is, is really for, you know, members of the district that, you know, may need assistance. Maybe it's clothes, maybe it's, you know, essential items, food, all of this. Um, you know, a lot of it was put forth uh, through grant dollars. Um, there was some donations. Um, they worked with some other organizations and, you know, it, it's a tremendous asset, I think, to the district and, and, and to, the, to the public and, and members of all of the communities that are part of the district. And I just wanted to, to commend them for that. It, it's a, a great thing to establish there. Um, I also want to mention um, regarding vaccine, we have not received any information regarding uh, vaccine availability. Um, what we are hearing is um, Cuyahoga County health officials are urging uh, patients. Um, what, again, I, I uh, reiterate to everyone, um, please contact your primary caregiver if you're looking for vaccine information uh, for the coronavirus. Uh, you can also follow the Cuyahoga County Department of um, the Health Department. But you can also look at, you know, the local drug mart, local um, other or, um, um, businesses that are taking signups. Um, but if, if you are someone that feels that you are at risk, uh, please contact your primary caregiver and, and they can offer you, um, you know, the best advice as far as how to go and get signed up. Uh, and lastly, I just want to uh, reiterate um, what Mayor Kochi mentioned um, in sending, you know, on behalf of the administration and, and myself, the condolences to the Novak family. Um, Rich was a huge member of the Bedford community, uh, volunteer, member of the Civil Service um, Commission, and, you know, he will be greatly missed and, and want to send our condolences to the family. Um, he will definitely be missed. End of report. Thank you. Uh, John Montello, our law director. Thank you, Mayor. I just uh, want to congratulate Jaden and wish Bob a happy birthday. Wish everybody good health, not just our elected officials, but everybody in our community. I would uh, urge you all to continue the social distancing. And uh, my personal opinion is to get the shot, but whatever, for what it's worth. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to thank Tracy and the administration for uh, working hard this week to get all of this uh, legislation done. It was, uh, you know, it was a lot of work, uh, believe it or not. I mean, not. Not believe it or not, but it was a lot of work. And uh, thank you all for your help and the report. Thank you, John. Our finance director, Frank Ambosi. Yeah, Mayor, uh, Mike, uh, you both spoke uh, really wonderful about Richard Novak. And uh, I had the pleasure of working with him on civil service for over 30 years now. And he was on the board way before my time and uh, pushing 40 years. And he's been responsible for a lot of hiring of good police and firemen over the years. And, uh, you know, he did a wonderful job for our city and uh, really appreciate his efforts over the years. And he was very good to work with and chairman of our group uh, for many, many years. 
Uh, also, just before his passing, I mean, just to show how his work ethic was, uh, a couple of days before we were able to pass some new laws and legisl um, rules and regulations in regards to allowing lateral transfers for our police department and our fire department, uh, which we'll be taking advantage of right now. We have uh, actually some advertisements out there for our police officers to uh, be able to do lateral transfer to the city of Bedford and uh, some specific language this evening on uh, legislation in regards to uh, pay and uh, time uh, used that we came up with in our uh, uh, some recommendations for council and the city. Uh, so I thank uh, Richard, his family, and my condolences go out to the family of his passing and uh, he will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Janudis. Thank you. Well, uh, my condolences also to the Novak family. Um, I didn't know Richard a while, but I saw him everywhere. He came to all the council meetings and I tell you, he always had the most welcoming smile. That man was always smiling and yeah, he, he will be missed dearly. Um, I have to say, Mr. Malice, he, the city, even though it's shut down with COVID, you really have some really good projects lined up uh, in the future. So I, I really have to congratulate you and your staff for all of that because there are some really exciting good things happening uh, in and around Bedford that uh, people will will soon soon recognize. Um, Jaden, I got to tell you, where that was really great. So, thanks to the mayor for bringing Jaden to us because that was so inspirational. I tell you, where would we be? without the Jadens of the world. That's where I, that's what I wanna know. I mean, what, these kids are so remarkable. I mean, when it comes to things like uh, race, the new generation, these kids are colorblind. They don't, they, don't have the, they don't have the leftover racism that so many, uh, some of the older individuals have, do you notice? So I think things are going well. And when, when I encounter someone like Jade, and I, I know that uh, we're, we're going to be in good hands in the future, it's, it's really a hopeful thing. So congratulations to Jade, and that was great. And uh, lastly, a little tidbit. <clears throat> Back in my day, when I was, <laughs> it seemed like I was as young as Jade, and one of my big interests uh, in my life was uh, studying ancient civilizations. And I had the uh, opportunity to travel uh, extensively around Mexico and Central America. And I always wanted to see all the ruins of all these great cities and whatnot, because it was scarcely talked about in school. So this, this month we have uh, Black History uh, Month. And, uh, and I, I think it's unfortunate that uh, so many of us uh, think that Black History uh, in America starts uh, when uh, the slaves were stolen and brought here because what I discovered was that the first great civilization in North America was a black civilization. They were called the Olmecs and they flourished somewhere around uh, 1200 BC to 400 BC. And lo and behold, who knows that the first great civilization in North America was a black civilization. And if you were in it, it's a really interesting story. If you go to see uh, any of the information on uh, the internet or whatnot, this is a civilization. These were people who um, had wore their hair in cornrows in the same style that people wear today. And uh, it, it's just it's just amazing things. So that's why I wanted to share that little tidbit uh, that I discovered for Black History Month. Thank you. End of report. Thank you, Mr. Fluharty. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one good report here I heard already tonight was uh, Union Street finally getting done. Uh, we might uh, have to have the ambulance over there when they finally start on this because. <laughs> We might have a few people having strokes. It's finally getting done. But uh, 
at least it is getting done and that's a good <laughs> sign. Um, and uh, I know everybody has talked about Rich. Uh, Rich was in my ward and I've got to know Rich very well, him and the family, uh, Louise, his wife. And uh, uh, it, it's just sad that that had to happen because Rich was, uh, uh, Rich cared about this city and uh, I had a lot of long talks with Rich and uh, I'm gonna miss uh, Rich because he kept me on my toes out there in the area because if I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, he'd be telling me to, That's for sure. you gotta get out of here. And he wasn't afraid to tell you either. But uh, he will be missed. And uh, so I just want to end, uh, end that with just saying that, uh, Rich, we, uh, I personally miss you and going to miss you. And uh, uh, rest in peace. And hopefully the family can uh, put this behind them. Thank you. And the report. Thank you. Mrs. Mizek. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be here tonight. Um, Tomorrow is good old Groundhog Day. And of course, we're all kind of sentimental tonight. Uh, first off, I too want to offer my condolences to the Novak family. We knew Rich as Mr. Carman. His father was a car salesman from way back when, and uh, he received a beautiful old Pontiac because he loved old cars. And him and former mayor Dan Posek, my husband and several others, others were all what they call Gearheads, but I knew Rich from way back when. Matter of fact, he was one of the after alumni of Garfield Heights High School after me, but not too far after me. Uh, as far as Jaden goes, that little, that young gentleman will be going far with his life. He, it was super. His mom, he liked baseball, and I can attribute to her being one of my ball players for the high school when we were out there with the baseball teams. And his dad, Mr. Super Drug Dressman, he was, he's been a good guy ever since him and Jen um, got together. I know most of these families very well because I guess I've been here in Bedford the longest and I value my time here. I want to give Mike an FYI, this afternoon on Channel 8 News, we had touched upon this subject earlier today <clears throat> about the uh, <clears throat> Uh, code red alert in the middle of the night on Saturday morning because of the uh, abduction of the little girl. Uh, the, the chief from Newburgh Heights is in, in charge of some of the commanding uh, positions on that uh, code red group. Uh, they're going to work on that because a lot of other people called in about the hour of the night the phone rang, practically giving everybody else a stroke because other people worry about other things. But the older people, as soon as that phone rings after 10 o'clock, it's like something happened. And <clears throat> I can attest to that too, because then you got to follow up call about four o'clock in the morning. Well, supposedly they're going to either curb the timing of these calls, or we'll know at a later date, or um, eliminate some of the people that, of the older stature, of the older people to get these calls during the middle of the night. So that doesn't upset their heart rhythm. And I, I heard Wally mention about one of his older day things that he always remembered. Well, last week on January 26th, I received a text from a lady in Macedonia saying, happy namesake day. Now, if you're of the Catholic religion, which I am, you know, if you're not a saint, you can be one sooner or later. Well, my mom had her namesake on Palm Sunday because she was Palma. Now, I received the text the other day saying that January 26th was St. Paula's name day. But back in 405, I was just a mother of the desert. Well, I'm everybody's mother sometimes. But I says they made it, they, they transposed the word desert. It should have been the mother of dessert. <laughs> but, but we'll leave it at that. But everybody stay safe, have a good week, and Drug Mart is taking signups for shots. I got mine yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Saunders. Yeah, just make a quick statement here. Tomorrow is Groundhog Day, and if you look outside tonight, you'll say, oh my, but uh, <laughs> that that. Tonight's is nothing. You wait till this coming weekend. We're supposed to go into the deep freeze. We could be down in zero or below again. So let's hope uh, he 
uh, doesn't see a shadow and we can only have a few more weeks of this mess. But uh, <clears throat> in any case, it is winter. It's the worst part, usually the last week in January and the first couple in February. So we're used to it being here in Northeast Ohio. So we're hoping that we can get through this really quickly. It's a little bit harder with the COVID the way it is because everybody's cooped up anyway. And that just makes it even harder to even get a slight chance of getting out. So uh, I want to give my condolences to the Novak family. Also, I've worked with him for many years on the Strawberry Festival because he ran the car show there for many years. Mm -hmm. And it's just not going to be the same if we ever even get a chance to have the Strawberry Festival again. But uh, I'm hoping that will be the case and we get this virus under control. So uh, as a quick reminder, uh, during this time period when we have unthinkable weather, especially if there's a winter storm advisory put out, don't park on the street. It's getting very difficult to get up and down. Uh, the snowplow about an hour ago came down my street and he had a back out because of a parked car on the street. So, uh, you know, it, it makes it very inconvenient for our crews to clean. On rubbish day, it makes it extremely inconvenient to pick up the garbage cans because your neighbor parks in front of your garbage can and then they have to uh, either pull out or and then they leave it in the street half the time. Be, be courteous and remember, uh, your, the street is there for temporary overflow. It's not a permanent extension of your driveway. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Spinks. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, just kind of piggyback off of what Don said. Uh, yeah, please don't, with the weather getting bad, snow piling up and stuff, please do not put your trash can in the middle of the street. For one, the trash truck gets, can't get it, and it becomes a, a hazard for people trying to get out of their driveway hitting your trash can. So bad weather coming up, no parking, no trash cans on the streets, please. Um Condolences to the uh, Novak family. Um, I also had the pleasure last several years working uh, uh, with Rich with the Strawberry Festival, um, the car and motorcycle show. Um, each year, it seems that it got a little bit bigger and better every year. Um, I know um, up to a couple of weeks ago, he was planning on uh, trying to do something COVID friendly this year with the car show. Um, and the Strawberry Festival will be back. It probably won't be back this year. We are, uh, talked to Bessie today. Um, we've got some plans, uh, some virtual things going on, some um, drive up different fundraisers. So we, we're working, uh, putting our heads together to try to have some fundraisers COVID friendly um, this year. Because um, it's not going to go away anytime soon. So uh so we are planning on things for the Historical Society. Um, let's see. Jaden, he's awesome. Such a talented young man on so many avenues. Um, friends with his mom on Facebook. So I get to see a lot of stuff on Facebook about Jaden. His piano playing is, is awesome. Just what a, uh, just an awesome young man. And it uh, kind of says a lot about his parents too. Um, what great parents they are and he's just he's an amazing young man and um, keep up the good work. Uh, Micah did have a question uh, when you were talking about the trees and stuff because I had a bunch a couple of weeks ago uh, taken off of Natalie and off of Grand. Are those some that I kind of ha did have some residents ask if they were going to be replaced or we have to actually, we have to go off of a, a certain map that the county has okay. regarding certain areas. Um, so Clint and Jen were reviewing that. I don't know which area will qualify for our score to get us the highest. Um, I can check that. And once we have an idea of what area we're going to look at, I'll share that. Um, but I, I don't have that right now. I know they're working on it. They're working on completing the application. And then all of us will review it. Um, prior to submission, but um, I'm not aware of that just yet. So I don't want to say yes, but I don't want to say no either. It could. I just, I need to look at that and see what they're looking at with the county mapping. Okay. Now I'll put you on the spot again. Any word on the uh, 
the flashing lights are the signs for the speeders because they were, it was crazy this weekend. I got several calls on flora speeding and that's a dead end. Yeah, um, so I, I included, I, I put that in uh, last week. So we, we did receive um, our speed monitors. Um, we did get those. We did not put them up last week just due to the weather, um, but we are going to get them up. Um, one of them is going to be a, a mobile one. We'll be able to move from location to location. And then another one's going to be a permanent one. Um, we haven't identified where we're going to put that permanent one yet, but we, we do have two, one six, that- five grand. No. <laughs> we, we do have some that can be, that, can, that we do have some that'll be um, mobile. And the hope is that we'll get those up in the next week or so. But yeah. we did finally receive them. Okay, good. The kudos, because I mean, they're not even, and it's not just great. It seems to be, because I sat at the window and it's now to the point that they don't even slow down. And they have to see, you know, and it's some of the same cars. And um, kudos to our guys. I see them out there. I see them writing tickets. I see the reports that our, our tickets are up. Um, I see them on Broadway because they do. They use Broadway in that curve right there. It's crazy. And, of course, we've had several wreck, wrecks there. So uh, kudos to our guys. I know they're out there and they're working with the weather and the things the way it is. But, uh um, on our new business tonight, I want to give kudos to you, Mike, and Frank, um, and all of our guys, the, the fire department, the police department, the service department, water department, all these guys. And um, I know when I first came on council, poor Mike's car was, well, I rode with him some uh, somewhere when we were going to some meeting or something. I literally thought that he was going to do like the Flintstones and get the car going with his feet because there was a big hole in the floorboard, but he still got around in that car. So what the what they do, what our city employees and, and maintenance and stuff do for these vehicles. So this is important tonight. And, you know, these guys deserve, and it does look on our, our city of maintaining those vehicles. And, and, you know, sooner or later, you do have to purchase because we depend on those for the guys being able to do their jobs and for their safety as well. So... Mike, Frank, thank y'all, because uh, y'all do a lot with a little bit, and we appreciate that. I know myself on council, and I could probably speak for everybody else, too. We do really appreciate this year. Last year has, uh, this year starting off tough. Last year was really tough, and I think our city is where it's at because of, of the work that y'all are, are doing. So kudos to y'all, and, and thank y'all. Um, as a resident myself, I, I thank you very much for that. End of report. Thank you. And I think we all convey your failings to our uh, feelings to our uh, administration for what they do every day. Um, do a great job. Again, thanks. Okay, let's get on with the new business and ordinance authorizing. Uh, 9843-21, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Larkin Greenwood Ford to purchase a 2021 Ford police utility vehicle and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension by Spinks, second by uh, Janudis. Clerk, call the roll. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Coxie? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Mizek. Uh, Mike? Thanks, Mayor. Uh, this is a what we try to do um, on a yearly basis is look to replace anywhere from two to three um, police cruisers this year, we're replacing two. This is the first of the two. Um, and again, it is a um, 2021 Ford uh, police utility vehicle. Um, go, moving with Larkin uh, Greenwood Ford, uh, Larkin <laughs> did receive the state of Ohio law enforcement contract through the state bidding process. Um, and that's why um, we're going with them. Thank you. Any questions? Clerk, call the roll, please. Tenutis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. 
Mizad? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Ordinance number 9844-21. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Ganley Chevrolet of Aurora to purchase a 2021 Tahoe SUV and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension by Fluharty, second by Janudis. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. A motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Spinks. Uh, Mike, you explained. Uh... Yep. This is uh, this is the second one, and I'll I'll just add um, two other items. This is the second of the uh, police cruisers through Ganley Chevy of Aurora. Um, similar to Larkin, Ganley did receive uh, the state of, state of Ohio bid contract um, for this type of vehicle, uh, which is why we're choosing to go through them. Uh, both of these cruisers um, we did include in the uh, 2021 budget process. So these are budgeted for, and I will say, you know, even, even all the way to our mechanics, I mean, um, they do a tremendous job and, and understand when, when a cruiser comes out of service or when, a, when, a, when these two vehicles that we're replacing, you know, the vehicles, the last one that we moved over to another department out of police um, had 168,000 miles on it. Um, and it's, you know, it's showing it's showing its age, you know, they're, they're, they're out there. Um, so it's not like we're replacing vehicles with 34, 30 or 40,000 miles. Um, these vehicles that are getting replaced are well over 100,000 miles. And that, that's a lot of miles in a city that's only five and a third square miles. So they're getting used. <laughs> uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Bluehardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Ordinance number 9845-21, an ordinance authorizing all actions necessary to apply and accept Northeast Ohio Public Energy Council, NOPEC, 2021 Energized Community Grant Funds. And can I have a motion for acceptance by Fluharty, second by Saunders. Clerk, call the ward, the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Saunders. Um, Mike? Thank you, Mayor. Um, the last few years, we've been fortunate enough to receive grants through NOPEC. Um, these grants have to be geared towards um, it could be a wide range of projects, but they need to be focused on ener energy improvements, upgrades, things of that nature. Um, in previous years, uh, we did look at replacing some um, heating and cooling. Um, actually, it was a, a hot water um, hot water tank system um, in the municipal center. My apologies. Um, and we also, the lighting that we replaced along Willis, the decorative lighting, um, that was all funded out of a NOPEC grant. Similar grant is available this year that we're um, being awarded, $33,000. Um, although we have not identified a specific project yet, we have had some discussions. Um, and once we do, that'll be um, shared with council. But what we need to do tonight is pass this ordinance simply to accept this grant and accept the $33,000. And kudos to um, Jennifer Kuzma and, and Frank Gambosi uh, who worked through this project. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none. Clerk, call the roll, please. Junudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. <clears throat> uh, ordinance number 9846-21. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with J Auto Group 
for the purchase of three 2021 GMC Sierra 2500 HD two wheel drive regular cab, 142 inch pickups and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension by Flu Hardy, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll, please. Nudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. A motion for third and final by Janudis, second by Saunders. Uh, Mike, again. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the next couple of ordinance, ordinances address um, equipment vehicles um, in the water department. Um, some of this obviously will allow the uh, existing vehicles to be transferred over to the service. Um, we're doing this so the general fund will not take the hit um, on, on uh, these expenses. All of this has been budgeted for. Um, looking into this, again, similar to police, you know, these pickup trucks that we're going to be replacing, um, two of them are, two of the ones being replaced are 2002s. The third is a 2003, so they're approaching 20 years of age. Um, we did receive another quote through Valley Ford. Um, it was just about $600 more. Um, our recommendation is to keep this local and make the purchase through J Auto Group here in Bedford. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. And ordinance number 9847-21, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Valley Fork Truck Inc. for the purchase of one 20, 2022 Ford 450 regular cab 4x4 dump truck with stainless steel dump body and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension by Saunders, second by Fluhardy. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. And ordinance number 9848-21. One second. Oh. I think we need to do third and final. Oh, I didn't? Not no. on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we'll revote it then. A motion for third and final by Janudis, second by Spinks. Uh, call the roll again, please. My apologies. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Okay, ordinance number 9848-21, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of one 2021 Freightliner truck M2106 single axle cab and chassis equipped with a new VACAL model AS-13 combination street sweeper and catch basin sewer cleaner through ODOT contract 023-01. Lot to say. Uh, a motion for suspension by Janudis, second by Fluhardy. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Misak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Janudis. Uh, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have two pieces of equipment right now um, that are in extremely poor condition. Actually, our VAC haul, uh, which is a 1991, um, really is not able to be utilized um, as it is completely rotted out. Uh, last year, we did identify some significant rot in the undercarriage of our current street sweeper, which is a 2003. 
Um, by this ordinance, um, it's actually a, purchasing a combination vehicle, um, both a back haul and a street sweeper. By making this purchase and, and buying this combination piece, we're actually going to be saving about $160,000 in comparison to if we bought two separate. Um, our recommendation is obviously to move forward with this. Uh, Valley Freightliner um, is, uh, this is a state uh, purchase through the state cooperative purchasing agreement, uh, which is the, why we only need to obtain one quote. Um, this is a much needed uh, improvement to two pieces of uh, equipment that have currently um, ran its course as far as um, condition. And kudos to our mechanics for um, putting band-aids on them um, all these years. <laughs> Questions? Clerk, call the roll, please. Tenutis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. <coughs> ordinance number 9849-21. An ordinance authorizing the city manager and the finance director to modify the wage and benefits for police lateral transfers and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension by Spink, second by Fluhardy. Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Motion for third and final. By Saunders, second by Mizek. Uh, Mike? I'll take this one. Oh, yeah, in, okay, good. In line with our civil service uh, updates and uh, new rules and regulations, we're allowing the ability to accept lateral transfers, which are being done all over in the uh, Cleveland area. And in line with that, there's a lot of competition for qualified candidates for police officers and firefighters, obviously. But uh, at this point, we've worked with the uh, police department in line and the unions in line with what would be acceptable incentives that we could offer uh, to uh, candidates coming to the city of Bedford. Now, therefore, that the civil service nor the administration can uh, authorize any types of incentives or pay or any of these items, we go to council this evening to ask for them to uh, look at accepting uh, two items that we felt were incentives that we could offer uh, in, in line with uh, what unions would accept too. And one being the payroll. So for example, that we are accepting applicants that have at least one year of experience in another department as a, uh, a regular certified officer or equivalent thereof. And in doing so, the pay scale of what they would be uh, accustomed to would be more than the beginning scale of what we do in the city. So therefore, a person with one year, for example, would come on board with the one year uh, lateral transfers, what we're recommending uh, to the pay scale of the police officer in one year, 18 months, two months, the same thing. We're taking that all the way up to three years on our uh, program that we have with the uh, in our scale with the unions and we ask council to uh, in line with this adopt this ordinance this evening the other part that we have in line with this is in regards to what we could offer in regards to vacation a candidate coming from another city or from another entity will have already had one year experience and already be receiving two weeks of vacation in line with that depending upon when this person's hired after a 90-day period with the city, we would look to offer that uh, candidate the ability to take a uh, vacation. However, they would not have any seniority on the staff whatsoever. They can only earn that while being an employee of the city of Bedford. But nonetheless, after 90 days, having the ability to uh, take time off and vacation with their families and so forth. Uh, in line with that um, vacation, we, uh, we do have a clawback provision. We would require that if the employee did not stay with the city for at least a year, they would have to pay that vacation time back if they take that. Uh, so at this this evening, I ask council to look favorably upon this. Uh, civil services looked at this, uh, but of course, and the administration, uh, the police chief has, as well as his staff, recommended uh, this uh, program, and uh, we ask council to approve it this evening. We will. We have not talked to the firefighters in no means by this, but we're leaving the door open to start this process uh, for the future uh, if they need to look at this program also. But also, Frank, the union has consented to this, correct? We had an email from them saying they wouldn't be opposed to it, basically. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, clerk call the roll, please. Denudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Misak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Uh, ordinance number 9850-21, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Hall Public Safety to outfit the, the one 2021 Ford utility vehicle and declaring an emergency. Can I have a motion for suspension, please? By Spink, second by Pluharty. Clerk, call the roll. Tenutis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Misak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Coaching? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. A motion for third and final. By Janudis, second by Fluharty. Uh, Mike? These, thank you, Mayor. Uh, these next two are, uh, these next two ordinances are the, um, the cost associated with outfitting both of the uh, two new police cruisers that were uh, passed earlier um, in tonight's agenda. Um, we did receive two quotes. Hall was the cheaper of the two coming in at $15,825. The next quote we received was um, over 17,600. So they were the cheaper of the two. Uh, we've worked with Hall in the past recommend moving forward with them. Um, they are a little bit higher than what we've paid in previous years. And that is because these quotes do include um, the additional hardware um, and components needed for uh, when we're able to install the new cameras that we passed also earlier this evening. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, clerk call the roll, please. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Bizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. <clears throat> ordinance number 9851-21, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Hall Public Safety to outfit one 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe in declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension by Fluharty, second by Sphinx. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Denudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Uh, motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Fluharty. Uh, again, Mike, as much as same thing. <laughs> Same thing. So we'll outfit get, you can't have a vehicle without any uh, lights or sirens and all that stuff, could we? <laughs> okay, any questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. BSAC? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. And finally, resolution number 2560-21. The Council of the City of Bedford of Cuyahoga County, Ohio, met at a duly called and authorized meeting of the Council on the date set forth below, such meeting being duly called pursuant to a notice stating that time, place, and purpose of the meeting received by all Council, council members. And the following resolutions were made, seconded, and adopted by those present at the meeting. Um, Frank or Mike, who wants that one? I could take this one. The uh, police and fire employees, there's a, every once in a while we have one that's on active duty in the military. And when they're in active duty, they, duty, they have, uh, while they're out, they have the ability to buy back their pension uh, that they would normally pay out of their paychecks as they get paid, but it's not taken out at that time. Later on, they have the right to buy it back, but they also would like to buy it back in the form of deferring that pension uh, 
to be paying taxes on it later. And in doing so, they need a legislation to authorize this for the pension board. So the pension board recommends this legislation that we have on the table this evening. So in regards to police and fire, if they ever decide to do this, which we do have one in play uh, waiting and pending on this uh, decision, uh, so that he could defer his taxes like everyone else, basically, um, and in the pension plan. So I ask council to look favorably on this evening in, in regards to that. And, and again, this is nothing new. This has been done for uh, decades. Yeah, other cities do this all the time. We just had the legislation passed now that we need this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Um, do we have a motion uh, oh. to suspend? Who Did made? We? No. Uh, it was uh, who made the suspension? I mean, we I have one. John said we earlier we needed it. Yeah, we you didn't, didn't need do it. it. Oh, we do need it. We do we need, do it. need it. it. But you didn't ask it. You didn't ask it. You sure? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Checked it off, but uh, okay. <laughs> Motion for suspension. I know we did it. Spink second by Janutis. And call the roll. Janutis? Yes. Luverde? Yes. Bezak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. And motion for third and final. By Saunders, second by Mizek. Call the roll, please. Janutis? Yes. Luverde? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Saunders? <clears throat> yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx. Yes. Hey, thank you. And now comes uh, the hearing of citizens. Uh, if you have a comment, uh, contact uh, city manager at bedfordoh.gov. City manager at bedfordoh.gov. Um, do we have anything, Mike? Uh, I have one question. Um, Frank, if you'd like to, or we can, I can contact them um, in the morning. They didn't leave a name, so I'm not sure if this is meant for the floor or not, but um, the question is, what is the effect of the proposed ordinance for lateral transfers for existing employees? How does this affect those employees that have come from other departments? It does not affect them at this point. We uh, plan on doing a... Um... Uh, written tests uh, within every two years. So therefore, if they wanted to do lateral, they would have done so. We already talked about this. And therefore, they would always be under three years uh, on that, uh, on the transfer. So therefore, they would not be at the high end of that. Uh, they have every right to start all over as a, uh, in, the, in the written test when we give those also. That's why a lot of cities will follow up with a lateral with a written test. Okay. Yeah, we need name and address for questions to be put in the record. Yeah. And, and I don't think I mentioned no seniority would ever be given to a person on uh, for the city of Bedford. They have to earn it working for the city of Bedford. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but uh, they just don't get that automatically coming in. So if they got time to take off for vacation, they'd be last in line uh, coming on board. Okay. There are, I'm refreshing it one more time here. That was the only uh, question for this evening. Okay. And with that, can I have a motion for adjournment? By Flu Hardy, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll, please. Janutis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Misak? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Well, thank you everybody for listening and to council. Have a great uh, week and uh, enjoy the day.